The following program is being brought to you by the Love Has No Limits Blankets campaign. The goal of the Love Has No Limits campaign is to get these blankets to persons who you know are having a particularly rough year. Share the message that no matter what they are going through, that they are loved. The Love Has No Limits blanket on the outside says, Love Has No Limits, while on the inside it says that it is a cup of winter warmth and you feel warm by the image of being inside of that cup of tea. Who wouldn't want that comforting image to be a part of the experience? So once again, go to the link in the description to order that blanket to someone that you know is having a rough time. And for no additional charge, you can have their names engraved on it as well. And now to the studio and our presentation for today, fearfully and wonderfully made. Wasted years, wasted years, oh how foolish, as you walk on in darkness, oh and fear. Turn around, turn around God is calling He's calling From a life of wasting As you wander along on life's pathway, have you lived without love, a life for fear? Have you searched? For lives hidden me or is your love filled with long, long wasted years? Let me sing that verse again, please. As you wonder, wonder along. life's pathway Have you lived without love a life of fear Have you searched oh for lives hidden me Filled with long, long wasted years Wasted years Wasted years Oh, how foolish As you walk Turn around, God is calling, He's calling you from a life of
Welcome to Soul Cafe Radio, where we cater food for the mind and soul. Please join us this hour for uplifting music, messages, and more. And now to the RMG Studios in Miami Gardens, Florida, and your host, the Word Master. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are and whenever you're listening. You're tuned into the From the Heart podcast here on Soul Cafe Radio. Today we are looking at our continuing series, Fearfully and Wonderfully Made. This week's theme, Mind Games, and today's topic, Delusions. Today we continue where we left off yesterday, where we're supposed to start, but we're supposed to finish off yesterday, that is Genesis 6 and verse 5. And so, Catapulting from there, we are going to see a most, a most, most destructive theme to mankind. And it began back then, and it finds its way from the ark down to our time. And the reason is, well, let's look at the reasoning. Well, first of all, let, let's read our scripture reading, which is taken from Psalms 139, verse 14. Bible says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. So what I was making reference to just now is Ecclesiastes 8 and verse 11. The reason for our topic today is based off of this verse. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Beloved, today's study, today's message, today's presentation is of a very important nature. Persons need to know that just because, using the regular example, you smoke, you smoke, you smoke, and you said, I've been smoking ever since I was, nothing's happened to me. And then all of a sudden, in the later years, when you're supposed to be enjoying life, all of a sudden, you get this persistent cough, and it escalates to worse. Next thing you know, you have emphysema, lung cancer. You're going to need to have surgery almost consistently. Your standard of living, your quality of living has declined. And then, in those sunset years that you thought you'd be able to enjoy with your family, kids, grandkids, you no longer, because as a wild youth, as a rebellious young adult, and all of that as a background, thinking nothing is going to happen to me. In later years, you look back and think, man, I don't know what all that fuss was about. Look, I'm still living, I'm still in good health. All because of one thing and one thing only that goes missing. And we'll see that in today's presentation. So I encourage you to share this one, share this presentation with those that you may know who are trifling with the mercies of God. And that's what it boils down to, my friends, trifling with the mercies of God. We'll revisit some old ground and in our coming back full circle, we'll see that it is because, well, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but as we get ready to pray, I did want to take some time here on the front end to remind you about our show sponsor, the Love Has No Limits Blanket Campaign. It's not about making money. The idea is that you buy one of these blankets for someone that you know during this past year has had a rough go of it. You know what? Today, I want to say that if you want to buy one for yourself and to be the example so when others come by your house, they'll see it, they'll, they'll know it, they'll realize it, that love has no limits. And the message is just clear in black and white. 
the greater greater part would indeed be to let someone know how much you love them, how much God loves them by purchasing one of these for them. I trust that you'll head to the description area after the presentation or during the presentation and just go ahead and order one for yourself, one for someone else. They're reasonably be priced $40, $60, $80 depending on the size that you prefer and the amount that you can comfortably afford. I can't even stress this enough as we are now officially have entered into winter here in the Northern Hemisphere. May God richly, richly inspire you to be so generous to those who need that extra level of love attention this time of the year. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your love and kindness, your tender mercies towards us. Thank you for being a God to us like no other. Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you. Lord, we honor you. We give you the praise, O Lord God, that you so richly deserve. Heavenly Father, we know that we're unworthy. Heavenly Father, we know that we don't deserve you. I just want to thank you and praise you, Lord Jesus, for you being who you are. O Lord God, thank you for your everything. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you, O God, for being so wonderful to us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. For you are good. You are merciful. O Lord God, thank you for your everything. Please be with the program today. Please be with everything that we are seeking to undertake. May your name shine through today. And may persons indeed, who you have made fearfully and wonderfully, may they know that they ought not to be despising the goodness and grace that you are extending in our time. Oh Lord God, help them to see that indeed that your loving kindness, that your long suffering, oh Lord God, is because you love them and you don't want anything to happen to them and you're preserving life so that one day they'll come to a state of repentance. Heavenly Father, as we go through this program, I pray that someone who comes on well, as they listen, hit that share button, Lord, and share it out with others. Lord, thank you so much for what you're doing, what you will do, and even now what you're about to do during this presentation in the lives of your people, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So at this point, we're going to take a break and listen to our theme song, and then we come back, our presentation for today, Love. Excuse me, fearfully and wonderfully made. Our theme for the week, mind games, and our topic for today, delusions. Stay tuned. You are listening to Soul Cafe Radio, food for the mind and soul. Jesus is mercy. 
Genesis 6 from verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And he repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made him but now find grace in the eyes of the Lord. So, as we said from just now, we begin from that verse 5. The Bible says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it is telling, my friends, it is telling that the depravity has gotten so far, so widespread, that only Noah, only Noah, and I'm guessing by extension, because the record isn't as clear, but Noah and his family are the ones that God saw as his 7,000, his 144,000 in that time. But it goes deeper than just thinking about Noah and his, his salvation, his family's salvation. Because here we see something that jumps out of, of us as we looked at yesterday, the language, the way that it's written. God saying that I will destroy, I will do this, I will do that. And like I said, the way that the Bible is written, the way that it's structured here in the Old Testament, it makes God come up and seem like some tyrant, some finicky person. After all, you would say, didn't he know how man would turn out? Didn't he already see the corruption that would happen? Why is the Bible written this way? Yes, I told you that it was not because God is selfish and he was mad or I made a mistake. And therefore, I'm going to course correct. Speaking of which, that would be the study, the topic of a final week as we look at Fearfully and Wonderfully Made. No, it wasn't that at all, my friends. It was the fact that he felt sorry for man. It was for us that his heart was aching, not for himself. Not at all. I know, yes, I know it seems that way. But once you begin to understand what's happening here, it will indeed break your heart. In Romans 1, in Job 21 and Job 22, countless other places, the men and women are back then. They knew, they understood, they knew what was up. The heart of the people, as it says here, was turning against God, right? And there's a principle that has always been in place. And it's not because God is arbitrary and he says these things. It is by natural order, by natural law. And that principle is, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. If he sows to the flesh, of the flesh he'll reap corruption. If he sows to the spirit, of the spirit he'll reap life everlasting. That has always been. That has always been. One more time for emphasis. That has always been in place. That principle. God has given us 
free choice as to how we would serve him. The deepest part of this series and the scenario that we're reading here, the delusion, my friend, is to me the fact that God took the blame. That God says, okay, this one's on me. It's my fault. My bad. And he comes off looking very bad at that. He comes off looking so bad that for millennia, persons have served God to this day, to this day, with one eye in their Bible and one eye to the heavens, wondering if they should shift seat to the right in case they would get hit by a lightning bolt because God is finicky and he might just take them out because of something that they would have said done previously and he's still stewing over it while they have long repented of it. In the commentary that I have on my Eastwood Bible on my computer, the very same thing I just told you is the very same language that comes out. God was mad, God was heated, and he was wiping out man. After all, he used the example of a powder and vessel he made. After all, doesn't the powder have right to destroy the vessel that he made? I don't like how it turns out, smashes it. And that's the same language that the commenter uses to describe the God who the Bible says is love. The God who, upon further ex- examination in Job, you come to find out that it was man, it was man who said, God, we don't desire your ways. It's not God who was saying, I detest your ways, like the commenter was saying, beloved, God did not intend for evil to exist. God is not God is not tolerating. God is not putting up with. God is not none of that when it comes to evil. Right? So I'm not saying that God is looking at this thing lightly and it doesn't hurt him what's happening because there's one thing I know and that is God is not selfish. His heart is not about himself. It's over us. And when we hurt, he hurts. See, there you go. Because I made him, I know what he thinks. I know how he thinks. I know. And therefore, when he's hurting, I could resonate with that. That's the amazing love of our amazing God. God doesn't hate you. God doesn't. God didn't hate the antediluvian world. God doesn't hate nobody. God doesn't hate the angels that rebel. God doesn't hate Lucifer. There's not an ounce of hate when it comes to God. The Bible says, God is love. Not an attribute of, or adjective to describe him. That's his very nature. That's his very makeup. He is. When we talk about love, you're talking about God. He is the source from which all types of love flow throughout the universe. Whether it's love for parents, love among the parents, love for siblings, love for strangers, all the types of love that you could talk about. At the fountainhead is God's agape. Beloved, understand when I tell you that God does not hate anyone, that the actions you do I promise you, listen to me. If you could just share this with someone who really needs to hear this, you could murder someone from morning to night and have a body count as long as the years long. And yet, God will not love you one iota less. You could go to church. Every day the church is open. Let's say church once opens 24 hours, seven days a week, and you find yourself there in the building still up, still going along with the music and the, the celebrations and listening to the word if the speaker is going 24 hours nonstop. And you, could, you, could listen, you, could, you could listen to music, Christian music. You could read your Bible nonstop. You could be on your knees praying nonstop. You could be the modern-day version of Mother Teresa. And that wouldn't make God love you one iota more. God is love. There's nothing that we can do to make him love us less, nothing that we can do to make him love us more. God loves you, no strings attached, agape. I hope someone listening gets that because I do want to move on, but I can't move on unless we know and understand that the way that 
the language of the Bible is structured on and on and on and on, continually throughout the New Testament. It makes God come across as the bad guy. Even when we get to the New Testament and we see Christ, quote-unquote, cursing the fig tree, turning over the tables, complicit in the death of Ananias and Sapphira, we go, wow. And all of these things that our eyes see and we read and we think that we understand, we think that we know, we don't take it to the Lord in prayer. That's the problem. That's the problem. We see these things, we see this violence, and we just take it at face value and we paint this this, this gross picture of our Creator, He who has made us fearfully and wonderfully, He who has provided so much for us. We paint with dark strokes. And it's time for repentance on that, on our part. Brethren, it's time for repentance of that on our part. The Bible says in verse 6, And he repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Again, God taken, taking it on for us. Brethren, understand that what God was seeing before him was, as I said, Man in rebellion, and again, like I said, not so much. It it, it didn't it, it didn't it didn't it didn't do anything to his ego. He has none to say, "Oh, I made them, and look how they're treating me." It is, I made them, and look how they're treating themselves. As I said, Romans one gives you a vivid picture of how man has descended into the madness. How man had gone far off from God's ideal for him. And so, in the destruction of the flood that's upcoming, when God was seeking to save, persons painted it that God was seeking to destroy. Look at what the Bible tells us when we get from Peter, how long. And we know that as the ark was being built, Noah was preaching, and as Noah hammered in nails, as Noah daubed the, the boards so that they would be sturdy and firm and safe in the water, as they cut down trees, as they put together plans to house this, that, and the other, persons were out there looking on. Some wondering, could it be true what the old man is preaching about? Others mocking, cheering. Same scenarios like we have today. But again, Ecclesiastes 8 and 11 is in play. Ecclesiastes 8 and 11 is in play. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of man is full set in them to do evil. Noah comes before the people and says, the sky is going to pour out water upon us. If you come into the ark, you'll be safe. And people did not listen. They were still pushing God away. They were still pushing God away. And what more can the Almighty do for them? You see, beloved, Peter got it right when he said that rather than being a means to their destruction, this flood, actually, as they were there riding out the storm, they were made to see that God is not the one who punishes people. He's the one who loves people. And therefore, because, again, whew, 120 years, right? God gave the probationary time. 100 years, 120 years from now, Noah, my servant, humanity will be no more. But you and your household only are found faithful. Beloved, I want to tell you something. God did not pronounce that in the public square. God did not tell those words to Noah in the midst of the hearing of the 
millions or billions of people, how many people were on the planet. You know what? If he did, guess what? Listen to this amazing truth. There would have never been a need of an ark in the first place. Because the people would have heard from God himself that they were in error. And the majority would have repented. You see, beloved, that is the thing. And again, it's, of course, not true repentance in the way that God offers it, right? That's, that's why today, when you and I going through a particularly rough time, we'd be like, Lord, if I could only see your face, if I could only see an angel, if I could only see your miracle, Lord, my faith would be made stronger. You see, friends, yes, yes, they would have been saved, and yes, the same thing would have happened as it happened in Nineveh. There would have been repentance among, but again, how long would that have lasted? You say, but Mr. Wordmaster, no, 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 hear me out, hear me out. Let me give you an example. The children of Israel, generations later, right? They, I mean, they literally saw all of what I'm talking about on display. The angels, the, the miracles, Moses seen God's face. And yet, that didn't stop Moses from taking credit of what wasn't his. That didn't stop the people from being rebellious. No. Beloved, as I say, and I probably haven't said it in a while, it is not God's presence with you that brings change, that brings transformation. It is God's presence within you. You see, some person may say, oh, if God was sitting with me, I wouldn't watch this wrong, dirty movie. I wouldn't play unholy games. I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do that if Jesus was sitting there with me. It's not the presence of God with you that makes you stop doing things. How do I know this? Again, speaking of the holy man all the way down, David, Peter, all all of them, Moses, Elijah, all of them, and God, the Bible says, was walking with them. Come down to the times of the apostles, and that right there is the one that is the lumen, the large, the most glaring example that it's not the presence of God with you that makes you holy. It's His presence within you. And you see, my friends, yes, yes, crisis would have been averted and the flood wouldn't have come because persons would have repented. And the Lord, again, in His great mercy, would have shown humanity that, yes, there's a turnaround because you saw these things. Jesus would have said to Thomas, Blessed are they that have not seen and yet believe. Beloved, the reason why persons who were curious about what's coming did not come aboard the ark is because the persons that were behind them laughing, the persons that were in front of them laughing and scorning, held more sway rather than the fact that it had never rained before. What is this old man talking about? If I step foot on this thing, I'm going to be a laughing stock. As the flood, as the rains came and the flood rose up, who's laughing now? All the mocking, all the jeering cease. You had never seen persons banging on a door to get in a place as you would have that day. But it was too late. They were trifling with God's mercy. They were despising His grace. And I think I mentioned earlier about what was it about the long suffering of God, what was on display. And there you have it, as the Bible said. Verse 8 But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. You see, beloved, while the majority are there busy, deluding themselves, or oh, it will never happen, it will never come. You Christians are talking about Jesus, 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 return of Jesus, the coming of Jesus. It's not going to happen. 
And yet, during this time of the year, a couple of days, in fact, a large group of people are going to be celebrating Christmas. And Christmas has doesn't have its centering on Santa Claus doing this, that, and the other. It has, quote-unquote, in the name of their Christ. And they are going to be celebrating his advent, his coming. They, 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 there's no way that they could come away from that fact that they're celebrating their birth, the advent, the first coming of Jesus. But these same persons, because of their whole mindset, their whole delusion, will not stop and say, you know what? Let me celebrate the fact that he's promised to return by giving him my life. Far from them, so deluded, the mind games that Lucifer and his angels have been playing on people. Oh, it's fine. Fine to celebrate a little bit baby born in Bethlehem and sing the Christmas songs and to watch the Christmas movies and to feel all warm and fuzzy on the inside. But that baby didn't stay a baby. That baby grew up. And that baby cried to the ends of the earth, repent, repent. But man will have none of it. And the thoughts of his heart continue to be evil. But the Bible says of God that his heart, his thoughts towards you are peace and not of evil. My beloved, the God that we serve is so amazing, so amazing. That's why the longer you serve him, the sweeter he grows. In Second Peter chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, the Bible says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon them swift destruction. Talking about the flood then, talking about the fires now. And many shall follow their pernicious, rebellious ways. In other words, those who are going to be lost, we call them pernicious. For reasons of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Again, delusions. Verse 3. And through covetousness shall they with feigned, hypocritical words make merchandise of you, whose judgments now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. The Bible is clear. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Beloved, I want to appeal to you. If you fall in the category of the deluded, oh, generations upon generations, I even had someone say to me the same thing a couple of weeks back in a Facebook message. I, your grandparents, your this and that, have been saying Jesus is coming soon for the longest. Oh no, it was a YouTube reply. But, beloved, it doesn't matter how long. You see, here's the thing. That very same person, if I were to tell them that from they st- turned 16, 17, 18, they were dreaming of millions, and it didn't happen in their 20s, it didn't happen in their 30s, but in their 40s, they developed this computer program, they developed this new invention, they developed this way of, and all of a sudden, the money started flowing in. But it took decades, and they didn't think it was coming. They probably, yeah, in all fairness, use that against you, and say, but at least I see it now. You're still waiting. As I've said countless times throughout this podcast, I don't mind waiting on the Lord. Because you see, during the intervening time, I know for a certainty that He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. And so I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting at all. I don't mind waiting because I know that the God of heaven the God of the universe, the God of wonders, is actually making something beautiful in his time. Don't delude yourself, beloved. The long suffering of our Lord ought to lead you to repentance. The goodness of the Lord, the Bible says, should lead you to repentance. If you're listening out there and you've been trifling with God's grace, you might have been part of the church, but just like the rest of them, when you saw no rain descending, you're like, oh, it's not going to happen. And then, and there's that other issue that we have to address. The fact that persons say, oh, well, there's no rain. Let me 
you know, see what's happening over there on the other side of the fence. It looks greener to me. See, that, that's the problem. That's why God never wanted to assert himself like that in situations where persons over the years, your parents, your grandparents, some of your children, were praying and crying out, Lord, show me yourself, show me your presence, show me this, show me that. It's because he knows that persons will be moving up of demonstration <clears throat> rather than by living by faith. Oh, beloved, that faith experience is so rich. You may not be able to see his hands, but you will be able to trust his heart. Only trust him, my friends. Only trust him. Soon and very soon. Soon and very soon. Advent, part two, will take place. Will you be happy as persons are this holiday season? Will you be rejoicing? Will you be ready when Jesus comes? Oh, my friends, can't you see the signs of the times? And soon the Lord, he will return. I pray by the grace of God that you will be ready. You'll stop making all the excuses in the world as to why. Beloved, as I said just now, the longer you serve him, the sweeter he grows. And if you only have a little bit of time to serve him here in these end times, because of the last work of the Holy Spirit, that latter rain power upon you, it may seem like it's been a lifetime. I promise you, because of the things that God will be teaching you in such a short time. But he cannot operate on demonstration. He can't bend to your every whim and to allow manna to fall from heaven and oceans to split. But he does one bang-up job of an amazing miracle. And that is every time you open up your eyes. Because I tell you, my friends, no man, no woman, no boy, no girl, no creature on this planet can dare tell me that they wake themselves up. That they go inside of themselves and tap themselves in their unconscious state and say, wake up, it's time. No one. No one. We do not wake ourselves up. Beloved, if that's the case in this scenario, then could you imagine all the other things that we've been taking for granted? The fact that we leave our houses and don't ask God for protection. The fact that we eat food and we take it for granted that, oh, it's safe for my body. I could sit here and talk about things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Beloved, it's one thing to try to fool other people. But when you dwell in self-deception, oh, that's very terrible because it means that you will stay away. Or if they only knew the blessings that salvation brings, they will never stay away. Softly and tenderly, my friends, Jesus is calling you. And I want you to say to him, while in others, your calling, do not pass me by. Please, please, time to come home.
Thank you for joining me today here on Soul Cafe Studios from the Heart Podcast. As we wind down, as we conclude today, I want to invite those of you who believe in the power of prayer to bow with me as I pray on the behalf of those who are still being deluded, those who are still being blindsided by the enemy, thinking that they have time. And in closing, we pray general prayer. For each other. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the privilege that we've had today to call upon your name and to share these amazing things with your people. Lord, just now, as I unite with my brethren to pray for those who are still out there in the world, and even some who are still in Babylon, lost in confusion, Father, I pray that you will turn turn things around, Lord God. And someone who's out there, who's questioning, who's genuinely being a skeptic, even the scoffers and the scorners, Lord God, please, I pray, we pray, that you will touch them, Lord, once again. You will tap them on the shoulder, Lord, so that they could turn around and look and see who's calling them. Oh, Lord God, as the song just said, while on others you're calling, do not pass them by, oh, Lord God, please, Do not pass them by. Speak to someone today, Lord God. Speak to someone, Lord, today. We pray, Lord God. There are family members who are out there, Lord God. There are loved ones who have gone astray. And Lord, if ever there was a time, a season for them to return, it is now. And I'm calling upon you, Jesus. I'm crying out, Jesus, for their salvation, Lord. I'm praying, Lord God, that you will bring them back safely to the fold, to the warmth of your embrace. Pray. And Lord, as we get ready to be dismissed from this forum, I'm just asking you, Lord Jesus, to please have mercy upon us. Please do for us that which I know only you can. Lord, we love you and praise you. And we give you all the praise, honor, and glory that you so richly deserve. Thank you for being a prayer here and prayer answering God on the behalf of your people, I pray. In Jesus' name, be with us now as we dismiss, but never from your presence, I pray. Never dismiss us, O Lord God, from your presence we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends of mine, as we come back to our study tomorrow, by God's grace, as we start to wind down, we'll see the end result of man ultimately trifling with God. We'll talk more about our weekend activities And I'll share with you some of the plans that are in store by God's grace for 2023. Until then, Maranatha. Thank you for joining us today on Soul Cafe Radio. You've been listening to powerful music and messages for the mind and soul. Join us next time when we deliver more of the same. And remember to visit our website at www soulcafeonline.org Thank you for joining us today here on Soul Cafe Studios for our special From the Heart podcast presentation Fearfully and Wonderfully Made. Please join us at our regular time 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here on Soul Cafe Studios. God bless.